What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network in HNDC, which stands for Hard Knock Digital Culture. We're also part of Cloud Dosage, Broadband Bullies, you name it, we are there. And we're back again with another NRO Daily. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in video game news. So do us a huge favor before we get started with this one. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when we're dropping these doses, we appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, let's get into it. This one is called the 2023 Xbox Showcase, a critical analysis and the need for sweeping improvement. Now, before I get into this one, I, I just want to precurse this with I know a lot of people out there are going to hear this and going to say, oh, there goes the Sony pony. He, he, he's talking bad on Xbox again. And I think we've gotten to a point to where we have to be smarter than that conversation. Things are elevated. So many things are at stake gaming wise to where we can't a knee jerk reaction can't be just to shun anyone who has a criticism of my favorite box. Um, admittedly, and for full transparency, up to this point, this generation, I have enjoyed um, PlayStation's offerings more than Xbox. That can change, who knows? We're, we're gonna see if that changes. However, as someone that is an enthusiast of what PlayStation has offered, when I saw their showcase, my immediate reaction was to go live and land based them. And I did that for a whole week. And other PlayStation enthusiasts did that for a whole week. That should be commonly done across the board. So we're going to address that today. All right. And hopefully that happens today along with people again, elevating the discussion so we can reasonably talk about what these platforms are offering, what they are doing for the sake of the most important thing here, which are the games, all right? But I do wanna welcome you back, gamers. In today's video, we are deep diving into the aftermath of the Xbox Showcase for 2023, which was held on June 11th. Now, there's been a huge debate surrounding this event with some claiming that it's Xbox's best showcase ever, surpassing even the PlayStation Showcase, which I won't disagree with it being better than PlayStation Showcase uh, from the previous month. But is it really the best? Like, is it really better than Xbox Classic and Coveted Showcase from 2008? And more importantly, did it truly accomplish what it needed to do in totality? Let's find out. So in order to discuss this video, I, I wanna break this up into uh, several parts. Um, and we're gonna start with the first part. Part one is the debate. Xbox Showcase versus PlayStation Showcase. So the 2023 Xbox Showcase undoubtedly had its highlights, revealing a lineup of highly anticipated games like Starfield, Avowed, and Fable. Now, while there are opinions on both ends of the spectrum, it's important to acknowledge that this showcase although better than PlayStation Showcase, fell short of fully captivating the demo or the demographic that Xbox solely needs, all right? And what is that demo? We're gonna get into that. Now, there definitely was positive feedback. However, many could have surmised that that feedback was from many pundits who fear brutal honesty on both showcases might damper or might dampen their, their readers' will to follow up on gaming news, thus affecting their clicks. But despite positive feedback, genuine or agenda-based, the showcase didn't successfully generate enough excitement to, again, that demo that we're talking about, to do what? To convert viewers into Xbox ecosystem enthusiasts. That's what Xbox needs. Not just to show games, but something that would start to win people over. It's very clear. Due to the various inconsistencies displayed in the showcase, despite the positive stuff and, and despite some of the accolades that people gave and what they show, that conversion is not happening. What am I talking about? Well, you know how we do here. Let me show you something. All right, look at this. This is the Amazon website for gaming that shows you the most popular items that are up for sale 
you know what I'm saying, during that time, uh, during, you know, recent time. Um, now, many may argue, well, MM2K, this doesn't show what's going on recently. Well, you see the Starfield um, controller up here at number six. So it definitely shows excitement and engagement in purchasing things that are game related recently. All right. And when you look at what's going on here, right? I'm looking at the top 20, excuse me, top 25 items on this list. And the only thing Xbox hardware related is the Starfield controller. And, 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 and that, that, that is a sweet looking controller, but that's all that's up here. Meanwhile, I look at number 11, I look at number 18, and I see the X, uh, the PlayStation consoles up here. In order for me to find a PlayStation console, I got to scroll all the way to 48th, which is almost out of the top 50, in order to find the Xbox console. Again, this is all activity after the showcase, all right? So again, it's great to show stuff that's like, oh, there's cool games coming out there. And I like seeing this on, on the screen. But what you have to do is this, you have to garner anticipation and you gotta get people, you gotta get people's anticipation turned into purchases. We've seen it happen in the past with previous Xbox showcases. We've seen it to where Xbox actually, I believe, outdid PlayStation and NPDs after a particular showcase. I think that happened a couple of times in 2022, despite 2022 was lacking actual stuff. But even what they showcased in the pipeline got people excited and they outdid um, PlayStations. Now, there was a supply chain shortage, but still, they did it. All right? We're not seeing that. Okay, so that's a problem. And then again, what Xbox has to do has to be aligned with converting people to the ecosystem opposed to them just clapping and clicking stars online as far as rating the showcase, all right? With that said, let's segue over to part two. Falling short of expectations, all right? And those expectations that I'm underlining, again, not just clicking on stars on a rating site or going to Jeff Keighley's uh, site and saying, yeah, I'm going to show them. I really like that. It has to convert over to transitioning over to the ecosystem. And and they're falling short there. Or they have fallen short. Um, the Xbox Showcase had its fair share of impressive moments. Again, especially with the unveiling of Starfield, a highly anticipated game from Bethesda Game Studios. However, one aspect that disappointed fans was the revelation that Starfield would be locked at 30 frames per second. All right. On consoles, that is, at launch. Now, this decision sparked a debate within the gaming community and raised concerns about the game's overall performance and appeal. While the scope of Starfield looked impressive, the limitations of 30 frames per second left many gamers feeling unsatisfied. And this is not good for Xbox's most dedicated base, the console gamer. Now on to part three. Xbox's fickle position because of all this. Now, Xbox finds itself in a precarious position when it comes to competing with PlayStation in terms of AAA mature content. The showcase, while offering glimpses into their pipeline of exclusive content, failed to provide enough compelling reasons for players to join the Xbox ecosystem or make a significant impact on console sales. And examples of this include, and or examples of why this may have happened, excuse me, include, Fable gameplay now being unraveled as in-game engine cin cinematics. Avowed looking completely uncompelling versus the hype it previously garnered. Hellblade lacking any compelling gameplay and also a barrage of DLC for IPs that currently aren't doing the job in making Xbox competitive. Xbox needs to regain the trust of gamers by 
consistently delivering high quality genre defining experiences that rival playstation's offerings that's that that simply was not done particularly in the base show all right now on to part four the need right the need for um improvement to win gamers back and solidify their position xbox must address these challenges the need to prove that they can compete on the main stage with AAA mature content, offering experiences that go beyond what their competitors provide. Now, despite PlayStation's poor showcase, they have produced games frequently in the past, and they got a, some big hitting games coming up. Uh, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to Amazon's most anticipated list. Um, if you scroll up, if we scroll up here and we check out uh, what was that number? Eight, it's in the top 10, Final Fantasy 16. Now we don't see Starfield up here, but reasonably so, maybe Starfield isn't available yet. I, I, I assume that Starfield, once it is available, will be top 10, maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. Um, a game that huge, despite it being in Game Pass day one, should still see some, some rotation in game sales, but um, th that's here nor there. That being said, um, now again despite the poor showing in the playstation showcase they have produced frequently in the past and they have a trust established because of that xbox does not have such a luxury as far as missing the mark on the demo needed every opportunity that they have that they're going to engage this demo they need to nail it from here on out it's crucial for Xbox to inspire the development of genre-defining games and establish itself as a worthy competitor to PlayStation. Without such competition in the gaming industry, we as gamers suffer. All right, period. And with that said, that now brings us to our conclusion. In conclusion, our analysis of the 2023 Xbox showcase has revealed both its strengths and its weaknesses. While it may have outperformed PlayStation showcase, it failed to fully engage the audience in a way needed to help propel the platform. This is engaged uh, engagement that includes generating the desired level of excitement to attract new gamers to the Xbox ecosystem. Now criticisms such as the disappointment over Starfield's 30 frames per second limitation, highlight the need for Xbox to address key issues and deliver outstanding games. As a gamer, as gamers, we should focus on constructive criticisms to ensure the industry continues to thrive and provide us with exceptional gaming experiences. Let's keep demanding better games, regardless of the platform, because in the end, it's about the quality of the games that truly matter. And with that said, I wanna say thank you for watching. Let's continue our journey towards better games together. With that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. That leads you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, Cloud Dosage. With all that said, I appreciate all of y'all. Peace, have a wonderful gaming day.